When Apple blocked the unique device identifier back in iOS 14, companies like Facebook and other social media giants lost over $10 billion. And this has only been in a space of a couple of months. It shows how valuable user data is and that we are living in post-privacy world. Almost nothing is ever private or secure anymore. Email providers are reading your email, social media companies are using AI to parse your private messages, and your favorite design tools are... Well, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Before we begin, if you like the video, click the thumbs up button because they might actually take it away as well. And if you haven't subscribed already, subscribe because this really helps the channel grow. And of course, I understand that this subject is pretty controversial, so there might be very conflicting opinions down in the comments. So let's be civil. Let's talk about it, let's discuss it, but let's be nice to each other, okay? Thanks. It's pretty obvious to think that your social media apps are spying on you, right? Well, we kind of got used to that idea. Well, how about some tools that you used to move some rectangles around before calling it a day? With the help of my friend Carolina from Hype4, we took a look at privacy policies of the most popular design tools. We tried reading through them and understanding as much as we can to see what data they collect and how they actually use that data. Of course, we're not gonna go through entire privacy policies because that would take months and it would be quite boring. But I highlighted a couple things from each of the privacy policies of each of those design tools because I think that there are some sections there that definitely need our attention. I looked at the most popular design tools. So obviously there is Figma, there is Adobe XD, there is Sketch, but there are also some other tools like UXPin, Axure, Lunacy, and PenPot. My goal and my main focus was to see how much data they collect in the background, what they do with that data, and is it really necessary for them to operate properly? Because obviously there is some usage data that can help find bugs in the app and stuff like that. Keep in mind that I'm not a lawyer, obviously. I don't really even look like one. So I'm not really that well versed in that legal speak and I have only my own interpretations of those privacy policies. So. I might be completely wrong here, or I might demonize something that actually isn't really that bad. So just make sure to actually look at it yourself and think for yourself. Okay, let's start with Sketch. I decided to also show how much the app costs per month next to the name, and in this case it's $9. If you want to read it, pause the video and do. What this paragraph means is that the app itself is apparently not tracking you as the only tracking that's being done is on the marketing website and the Sketchcloud platform. They're using cookies and local storage, but that's pretty common. So far, so good. They also explain how they use cookies and that they can be third-party cookies, likely referring to Google Analytics that they have installed on their website, but they are anonymized. Nice. And of course they may collect your email for marketing purposes, but I think that's something everybody does. So this is actually not bad and this is something that I was expecting. They are tracking you for some marketing reasons, but mostly on their website or web-based platforms and you can block it if you want. Figma is currently the most popular design tool. It costs $15 per month if you decide to pay monthly. They collect a lot more information about you, however, including your IP address, your location and your device MAC address, which is a unique identifier that every computer has. What's a bit scary is that they also track pages you visit before, during and after using Figma, links you click and so on. That probably means they are tracking your entire browser activity. Now, that unique fingerprint or signature of your device is basically the thing that Apple has blocked Facebook from using on the iPhones. Figma is creating one for your computer. Both they and third parties can provide content and advertising based on that which I think is a very non-direct way. They may sell the data to some third parties to show you ads in the future. While Sketch said you can block cookies if you want, Figma notes that the app may not work correctly without them enabled. This may have something to do with keeping you logged in, but it's pretty vague. And once again, they are able to record what websites you visited and if you clicked on an ad. This may be for their own ads on their own pages, but it's unclear. I think for a design tool, especially one that's one of the more expensive ones in the paid plan, they are collecting quite a lot of data with the possibility to sell it to advertisers. Okay, here is Adobe XD. They changed the app icon quite a lot, so when you're watching this video, the icon may be a little bit different. 
It costs $9.99 per month, so it's actually $10. Overall, it's not bad, but they can use sites like LinkedIn to get more information on you, like more info on the company that you work for. It doesn't clearly say what the info will be used for, but there is not a lot of tracking here. This is pretty standard. They do collect data on how you use the apps and websites, but this is something everybody does. It's surprisingly little data though, just the IP address, browser, device and which website brought you to their site. Which is understandable. This looks pretty standard. They also say that they're mostly tracking the US and India because it's likely their largest markets. Which is actually good that it's even disclosed like that. The other four apps are not as popular, so I'll briefly mention a couple of things from their privacy policies. But first let's get to know them. UXPN starts from $19 per month, Axure starts at $25 and both Lunacy and Penpot are completely free. Penpot is also open source which is really nice. UXPN says that they don't store your financial information like credit card numbers and they avoid gathering any personal sensitive information at all. The site tracking info is quite similar to what Adobe XD tracks, time on site, IP address, browser, device and what website brought you to their site. They state that you can limit tracking by removing cookies and there is apparently no disclaimer that the app may not work. Axure lists external providers that may have access to some of your personal data with disclosure that they may not use that data for their own purposes. These include server storage, analytics, payments, forums, blogs and emails. It's all pretty standard. You can't be anonymous however. If they need some info from you and you decide not to provide it, you may be blocked from the entire service or that feature. Now, I'm not sure what this part is about exactly, but apparently the team can research you or your business and gather the data that way. It may not be as efficient as automatic tracking, but no idea why it's there in the first place. They also promise not to sell personal information and then they vaguely state that it may be shared from time to time. Nice. I understand it's mostly for advertising and marketing, so Lunacy will be using that data to advertise on other platforms and won't sell it to third parties that will use it for their own purposes. They also say they will ensure that there are adequate safeguards and processes to protect your personal data. Penpot uses personal data for promotion and marketing, but they promise to never share data with any third parties. Yes, any. That's a pretty strong statement, let's see if it stays in the policy, but currently it makes Penpot the most privacy oriented tool out there. The only way they can disclose personal information is with a court order or when you violate the terms of service. As you can see, something as harmless as a design tool can actually collect quite a lot of data and often data that they don't necessarily even need and they can keep a window open to potentially resell or repurpose that data with third parties in the future. So that basically means that they can invade your privacy and they can sell your private information to some external companies. It's especially scary with browser wide tracking because obviously if they're tracking all of the other browser windows and tabs, not even just the one that you're using to you know, preview the work or to design in, that means they know pretty much everything about you. They say data is power. It's also definitely money. So while making your beautiful design in the future, you might be secretly data mined in the background with your privacy being invaded. Not something I would expect from a tool that you use to move some rectangles around. What are your thoughts? Let me know in the comments. And of course, like and subscribe. Plus, if you want to learn more about design, check out my books and courses at Hype4 Academy. See you soon. Cheers and have a great day.